Hi guys, Pro 1701 here, and this video is to finish up our 10 video series, or not 10 video series, our video, what turned into a video series, about 10 Doctor Who stories from classic Doctor Who that I think are very atmospheric, and uh, definitely use atmosphere to build the story and help execute the story well. This was all supposed to be one video. Uh, the first video, I just kind of ran out of gas. The second video, toward the end... I felt like I was just being repetitive. And these last two really are, I think, kind of standalones. They really are the top two, that if this was a top ten, they would be the top two. Because these two stories, just, just atmosphere. When people, you know, talk about atmospheric Doctor Who stories, these are two of the ones I think of. They're the top two I think of when I think of classic Doctor Who easily. And number two on that list is Ghost Light. Ghost Light is just dripping with its own atmosphere. <clears throat> I mean, it's creepy, it's spooky, it's suspenseful, uh, the dark lighting. The Victorian mansion just seems like a nice haunted house, the way the lighting is kept low in it. Um, but even not just the creep and horror factor, it has its own atmosphere. And I don't do mean that in the traditional suspense creep sense, which it has that as well. But it has its own atmosphere and its own personality. There's no other story quite like ghost light the only story in the modern series that really comes close to it is that haunting of villa di dioa i really wish that that, mm, that was pronoun more pronounceable uh as that one kind of reminds me of ghost light um but i really like ghost light something about mccoy not wearing his hat in this story mm, adds to the atmosphere to me i don't know why it makes no sense for it to but he doesn't really wear his hat in most of the story, and for some reason that just adds to the story to me, for some reason. But I like everything going on, because Ghost Light is so weird and so hard to understand and so hard to follow. It's definitely not something you recommend to someone who's not into Doctor Who. You know, you don't say, you've never seen Doctor Who? Check out Ghost Light. You don't do that. Uh, Ghost Light really is for someone who's very familiar with the program. But I love everything going on with it, with about evolution and creatures evolving and everything with that Ebediah guy and how he's becoming more human and how his look changes. And you see his old husk. Everything with control. Everything with the prism-looking guy. Light? Is that his name? Light? He always makes me think of a moth for some reason. Uh, and how he's trying to study the planet, but he keeps changing and it's frustrating him and all the stuff that happens to a lot of the guest cast, the one guy getting turned into soap, the one guy kind of get uh, soap, soup, turned into soup. Uh, the one guy who gets turned into like a monkey, then you have the other guy, or the, the mother and daughter who get turned to stone. I always hate the fact they don't get saved, they get turned to stone. Um, spoilers, I guess. Uh, but but Ghost Light is so much fun to watch. I've watched Ghost Light multiple times. I love watching the work print of it on season 26, too. I just... It's really good. It's very important to the development of Ace. And I love the fact that Ace is very fleshed out, especially for a classic Who companion. I really, I really do think she is kind of the, uh, the prototype uh, for the modern companions when they're fleshed out well, like Rose was and stuff. Um, and I really like how they really explore her background. This one is very essential to her character. And I just like McCoy in it as well. Um... I think it's a really good story. There's, again, no other story quite like Ghost Light. Uh, it really does have its own personality. And then number one on the list, which one of my subscribers and one of my patrons has been sitting there the whole time going, where is it? It's Ham. I'm just going to say it's Ham. I know Ham has been waiting for this. There's one story on here. He's been sitting here. Where is it? And it's here. It's number one. And that is, of course, the horror of Fang Rot, which is a story I really like and a story Ham really likes. Him and I have had many discussions over it. Um, horror of Fang Rock. I mean, it, it's, it's atmosphere. If there's a single story in Doctor Who that I equate with atmospheric, it's the horror of Fang Rock. Um, I love how it takes place all at night. And it's a creepy, creepy night, a foggy night where you can't see. And then sometimes the lights work and sometimes the lights don't. Um, and then just watching as this creature that is not remotely human. I like the fact that the Rutan is not humanoid. I love when Doctor Who does something totally different when it's villains. I'll, I get a little burned out on humanoid villains. <coughs> I like that the Rutan is totally different. And the way it, its use of green light, it makes green light creepy. Because anytime you see that green light when it's illuminating on a wall or something, 
it's creepy. It's one of those situations where there's the green light. They need to get the crap out of there. No, no, don't investigate it. There's the green light. You go. You leave. I wouldn't have made it in that lighthouse. I probably would have been like the one woman, that, the only character I was glad to see die. There's the green light. We got to go. We got to go. You're annoying us. I don't care. We got to go. Yeah. I would make a bad companion. I would be in the TARDIS a lot. I'd be hanging out with Jess in her spa. Uh, yeah. Hey, we're at, we're at Centaeus 5. You want to go out? Nah, I'm cool. I like the spa over here. I'm just going to keep reading this book. I found a copy of the Time Machine. You seem to have a lot of those. So I'm just going to read it. Have fun. Oh, y'all got in trouble, you say? Um... I didn't mean to get quite that distracted, but I, I love the horror of Fang Rock. Some of the effects are a little dated, and I definitely would like horror of Fang Rock maybe to be the one that got the updated effects in the season 15 box set when it gets announced. Uh, but I love its use of lighting. I love it. I love the way the Rutan looks like the jellyfish. I like how it operates too. How it can kill with like electrical charges, and how it can also use that to short the lights on and off. The way it can mimic a person's body, and how it learns. How it's dissecting the bodies to study them and make itself more human. Uh, the guest cast, I like. They actually, it's like they're kind of two-dimensional, but they're kind of fleshed out. I mean, they're, they're a bit two-dimensional, but you can at least understand the motivations for them. Like the one greedy rich guy who's trying to get somewhere, the colonel who's barely tolerating him. And then the guys who were on the station at the beginning, like, I really like the first guy who got killed. I wish we'd gotten more of him. I liked him. And then the old, uh, the older guy who's kind of the veteran of the lighthouse, uh, he really kind of has dual roles, the actor there, which I believe he also played in Enemy of the World. I think he's the same actor who played in Enemy of the World, but he has glasses in Enemy of the World. But um, when he's actually playing the fisherman, he does a good job of being that kind of mentor-type figure and trying to help out. Uh, although that part where he keeps saying, it's going to strike, it's going to strike, about the dozen time he says it's going to strike, I'm like, and then he goes, it struck, and I'm like, did it now? But then later in the story... Um, about halfway through the story, when he gets killed, and then the Rutan is dis disguised as him, so he's having to play that character too. I like how he plays the the Rutan in disguise as that guy, because at first he plays it very alien-like, and then over the course of it, he becomes a little more human. Like the first time you see him smile, he's just like, kind of like something that's not used to smiling, trying to mimic a smile. But then later in the story, he He's still smiling when he shouldn't be, but it seems a little more natural, like he's slowly, like the creature's slowly learning. Uh, and I love the little aside, the little morality. It's not really a speech, but after um, they defeat the Rutan and he's having to stop the, like, the little mothership thing, he's wiring up the lighthouse, and Leela's kind of gloating over beating the creature because, you know, Leela's from a savage-type group. That, that is something she would do. And she was talking about how glad she was to kill it and all that. And the doctor talks about, you know, morality and all of that. And he just mentions it as an aside. Uh, I like that it does that. It says a lot about the doctor's character. And I love the fact that it is one of those things where you're not paying attention. You could totally miss it. You know, it's not like in the modern era of the show when they would be like, we have to teach a morality lesson. Okay, just to make sure you get it, audience, we're going to talk to you and make you know, let you know we're talking about morality, and we're going to tell you what we think is right on morality, and you're going to listen, and we're going to tell you to make sure you get the point of the episode. I like the fact it doesn't do that. It works it into the story. It's not the doctor talking to the audience. It's the doctor, as an aside, talking to Leela. And I like that. That's all it needs to be. But the horror of Fang Rock... I don't think I've actually quite mentioned how it is atmospheric, but it is. There's a lot of tension in it. Um, as these people in the lighthouse are slowly getting picked off by something they don't understand. And it becomes that sense of kind of like in a Friday the 13th movie or a Nightmare on M Street or any of those kind of slasher fix when you're slow seeing them slowly get picked off one by one. Because they are alone. Even though there is a group of them, there is that sense of being cut off from everybody else because they're on an island. They're at a lighthouse, which is a spooky setting in and of itself. It's basically, imagine a horror movie set on an island with nobody on it at a, on a foggy night in a lighthouse. Think like scenes from the fog, you know? Um, that's a great location to tell a story like this. Lots of atmospheres dripping with it. Um, you know, or kind of like, you know, like Crystal Lake 
or the, the log cabin from uh, the Evil Dead movies, you know? And the bat in the car won't start because something's wrong with the battery. They're, even though there's a group of them, they are still alone and isolated. You don't have to be by yourself to actually be alone. You can be alone as a group. Um, so I like that they're cut off from everybody else. And it's not so much... It's like one of those horror movies where something is out there that is so almost unbeatable. It's not a matter of if someone's going to be next, but when someone is going to be next. You know what I mean? You're in, you've seen those horror movies where it's not if it gets more of us, it's when it's going to get another one of us. And I'm just sitting here going, I hope it's not me. I hope it's not me. I hope it's not me. I hope it's Frank. I don't like Frank. Wait, Frank owes me money. I hope it's Doug. Wait a minute. I'm the funny, nerdy one. I am so boned. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there really is that sense of just slowly watching them get whittled down. And it really is. I mean, spoilers. The Doctor and Leela are the only ones that make it out. Uh, this, it's not definitely not a story you want to be one of the guest characters. That doesn't go well, which is another reason why horror fang rock works. Uh, I don't know if I've articulated my point well enough like I wanted to. If you haven't seen The Horror of Fang Rock, go watch it. It's really good. If you haven't seen it in a while, I definitely, I definitely recommend Ghost Light and Horror of Fang Rock. They're both great stories. Uh, Horror of Fang Rock's my favorite story from season 15. I do hope season 15 is the uh, next box set to get announced. So that's my thought on those two stories, and that's me finally concluding this list. It has taken a while. I've changed shirts a couple times, and my hair length has changed over the course of trying to get this videos these videos done um so let me know what you think down in the comments below on the other stories and on these two stories and let me know what you think your favorite 10 are other things to do click the like button click the subscribe button click the bell for notifications so you never miss out on a new video i also have a patreon if you would like to contribute to that there is a link down below for that i also have a poll going that will probably be up through the rest of august on which fourth doctor story I will be re-watching this between like five different stories like Pirate Planet, Ryboss Operations, Sunmakers, and a couple others. Uh, that is open to my Patreons. I actually got that open to any tier level on my Patreons, on my Patreon for my patrons. Uh, I'm also thinking about putting up one for third Doctor Stories. I haven't done that yet, but check back on it. I should have one up for third Doctor Stories soon because I plan on re-watching one of those soon. I'm actually going through the fifth Doctor right now, uh, watching some of his. Uh, but most importantly, thank you for watching.